The average time for choosing and approving smart bomb targets in Desert Storm was 72 hours. By Operation Iraqi Freedom, the average was only a fraction of that and could be done in as little as 12 minutes. Smart bombs will return on Modern Marvels. March 11, 2003, at Eglin Air Force Base, a giant weapon with the gaudy nickname Mother of All Bombs was tested. It is a smart bomb. It has an INS GPS kit on it. It can be launched from very high altitudes and therefore can attack targets very precisely. MOAB, or Massive Ordnance Airburst Bomb, about $170,000 a piece, packed with 21,000 pounds of explosives designed in part to clear out large areas of vegetation. This'll buzz cut your back 40. But it's not the future of smart bombs. Except for its precision guidance, Moab is an old-fashioned weapon known as a daisy cutter. But the trend in smart bombs is away from heavyweights like Moab to smaller and lighter ordnance. The more accurate the bomb, the less boom you need. This is a test of the SDB, or small diameter bomb. The $100,000 plus bomb is actually a mini bunker buster. Like its big brothers, it's guided by GPS and can penetrate more than six feet of reinforced concrete. But the SDB's warhead weighs a mere 50 pounds. Even non-explosive dummy bombs, once only used for practice, have been dropped on the enemy. Instead of high explosives inside the bombs, they used concrete to give it the same weight, and they allowed the accuracy of the paveway, the laser guidance, to actually take out the specific target without the explosion and without destroying anything surrounding the target. The other trend in precision bombing is known as joint standoff, giving weapons great range, allowing pilots to stand off miles from harm's way. The joint air-to-surface standoff missile, or JASM, is just now finalizing its operational test. So this has not been used in operational use yet, has not seen war. However, it's been very successful in its testing, and this is essentially the future of our weaponry. Costing between four and $600,000, JASM can fly to a war zone up to 70 miles away. Arriving above an enemy position, it begins circling trolling for targets while feeding TV images back to command stations. That allows the weapon to be loitering in the area of the target, waiting for something to occur, and in fact could receive commands against different targets after it's left the airplane. The ultimate smart bomb is one that chooses targets as well as attacks them. What's known as an autonomous weapon. Possibly they're the battlefield robots of the future. One autonomous system is a so-called sensor-fused weapon. Sensor-fused means it's packing different weapons, choosing them on the basis of what it sees. Parachuting from the bomb are many can-shaped objects. Miniature rotors help each one patrol a battlefield while sensors scan the area. It would look for a heat signature. Uh, it might look for a shape. Uh, it might look for a sound. The particular heat signature of a tank would signal the weapon to release an armor-piercing round. This is a live-fire test against tanks of the $300,000-plus weapon. For human targets, it would choose to spray a lethal hail of bomblets. Autonomous and standoff weapons may finally fulfill the 85-year-old goal of precision weaponry. To remove the pilot from the bombing equation. With pilotless drones and autonomous weapons, the dogfight may one day go the way of the medieval joust. Pilots of my generation feel like that potentially we're the last generation that's going to be able to serve out a full career in frontline combat aircraft that are manned. the aerial torpedo, to the laser-guided bomb, to joint standoff weapons. Safeguarding pilots has always been the goal. Protecting non-combatants, the humanitarian bonus. 
You know, in the Second World War, you had things such as Dresden, where entire cities were bombed. Or you had Hiroshima and Nagasaki, where just huge, massive amounts of civilian casualties were sustained. That's something that no one ever wants to happen again. With precision weapons, there may never be another Dresden. But there may be many more Baghdads. <laughs>